All right, this lesson is uh, one solely on the topic of alarms in GameMaker. Uh, it's important that you've watched the previous lesson on using the counters in the step method to do timed tasks because what GameMaker's done is they've introduced something called alarms. There's actually an event called alarm and you have a bunch of alarms that you can use for every object that you put in your game. Now what these alarms do is they basically do what we did in the code with the counter. They count down and when the counter reaches zero BAM! They run some code that you put inside of the alarm event. So to get started, we're going to sort of repeat the three tasks we did in the last video lesson, but we're going to use alarms instead. Now alarms are unique to GameMaker, but they do make things a lot faster to code, which is why we want to show you them here. Okay, first task we're going to do is we have a blue battle. I want to make the blue paddle fire a ball using an alarm and it's going to fire once every second. So here we go. We go to blue paddle. I go add event and I'm going to go to the create method. Soon as this blue paddle is created inside of the room, I'm going to turn an alarm on. To turn an alarm on, you use this kind of code. Alarm on equals and I'll say 30 to go off in 30 steps. Now, alarm is a special word, okay, specifically for the alarms. The square brackets we'll learn more about later, but the number in here is which alarm I'm using. Every object can have from alarm 0 up to alarm 11. And so I'm going to use the very first alarm, which happens to be alarm 0. And I'm going to tell it, hey, set your timer to 30 steps. Every single step, this thing is going to count down. 29. 28, 27, 26, 25, and it's going to keep going, and eventually it's going to hit zero a second later. When it does hit zero, you get to decide what code happens. What code is it going to run? You just go to add event, alarm, pick the alarm that you're using, and we're using alarm zero, and I'll just put the code in there. Now, this was supposed to be the paddle firing a ball, so I'll just quickly create a ball there. Whoa. And if I did this, we can give it a go. See what happens. So it's born, the alarm turns on, and one second later, and look, it's doing exactly what the other paddle did, right? The one second spread. Now, I shouldn't have used the word exactly there because it only fired once. This is exactly like in the last video. We're missing one little line. After it fires once, you need a way for the cycle to continue. In the previous video, we would turn the counter back to zero so it could count up again. Here, just add this line. Alarm zero, set yourself back to 30. So every single time it fires, the alarm turns back on. Tick, 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 tick. Boom, fires the alarm. Fires another ball, turns the alarm on again. Tick, 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 tick. Alarm goes off, boom. Fires the ball, turns the alarm on again, and you get the point. Okay, the cycle's endless. Okay, so that's one good use of alarms. And now when we have that in there, you'll see that our cycle does keep on going. Okay, so I have two different ways. Alarms or the counters. Really, all that alarm is doing is exactly what you coded in your counter. Okay, there's almost no difference behind the scenes. Okay. Next thing we're going to do is we're going to do like we had the ship firing, but limiting it. We're going to do the same thing with the man firing pineapples. So let's take the old man here, add event, and let's do keyboard letter P. Now normally to fire a pineapple, as I type this out here, pineapple ID equals a 
something like this. I have an error here. There we go. Instance create. This would fire the pineapple. But of course, when I run this one, I'm holding down the P key. This should do what we did before. Is this should just have a flood of pineapples. What do I have in the ship here? I Sorry, I coded in the ship too at some point. I'll just take that out. There we go. Just in the man. See, I practice these files before I make them. There we go. Now let's limit this using alarms this time. Now, this one's going to be a slightly more advanced, and this is an excellent introduction to what you can do with your alarms and variables. Let's go to the create event of the man, and let's grab a little bit of code, and I'm going to make a variable here, can fire, and I'm going to set it to 1. What I'm doing in my head here is, when the variable is 1, 1, you can fire. I'm going to set the variable to 0 at some point, and 0 means no fire. Okay, not possible to fire. I'm going to switch this variable from 1 to 0, okay, with an alarm and the fire key. So let's see how this works. Can fire is 1. They're going to hit the P key, and I'm going to ask a question. I'm going to say if can fire equals 1, then do the following code. Now, when the player is created, can fire is 1. And so this code's going to run, and it's going to make our pineapple force. Now, what I'm going to do after I fire is I'm going to say can fire goes to zero. The next time that P key is hit, can fire zero, so when it comes back up, is can fire one? The answer is going to be no, because we just turned that thing to zero. And so what you're going to get here is no more firing. So let's test that out. So I got one hit, and that's it. Okay, that can fire variable right now is just sitting there at zero. Now I'm just going to show this in the draw event, just so you can see this variable changing. It's nice to do. I'll just copy a little line here. Oh, this isn't going to work. Here we go. Cut. With object man. Man can fire. Okay, so that was just to draw that variable out. Just so you can see it working. Okay, you don't have to add that one if you don't want to. So you'll see it's a 1. As soon as I hit P, switches to 0, stays 0. Now you can probably guess what we're going to use the alarm for. I would like this variable to go back to 1 in a short amount of time. And that will let them fire again. So let's add that alarm in there. So they fire, I turn it to zero, and here's the big secret here. I'm going to say, man, your alarm number zero, 15. In 15 steps, alarm zero is going to fire off its code. What do you think we're going to put inside of alarm zero? Very simple code here. We set can fire back to one. Okay. Which means they can fire again. And now if you watch the uh, variable changing up there, I press and 15 steps later, it turns back to one 
and because it's a 1, the if statement will let us fire. So I can even just hold down the P key now, and this is just another cycle again. Fire, can fire 0, alarm's on, alarm turns can fire back to 1. Now it's happening really fast, the 1, the 0 there, so when I hold down, you don't see the 1. Okay, but it is turning to 1 for one single step. Pretty nice. Okay, the last one we want to imitate here is I am throwing pineapples just like we had the just like we had the bomb exploding. I'm gonna get the pineapples to explode, but using an alarm. This one's actually I think the shortest out of all of them. You can go to the pineapple, go to create. And this is a popular idea for objects that you want to detonate after a certain amount of time. Soon as this pineapple's created, I basically want to turn its alarm on. So right away I get that ticker ticking. Okay, automatically. Alarm zero equals 60. So in two seconds after it's created, and the secret here is to put this in the create event, right? So it's just right away, as soon as this pineapple's made. 60 steps later, the alarm's going to fire. What code are we going to put? I'll make a ring this time, and then instance destroy. Of course, you'd want to put sound effects and, you know, all the cool stuff in there. But, you know, just for learning purposes, fast effects here. And that's it. And then it's gone. Okay, and that pineapple's done. Pineapple. So it's pretty good. Every pineapple is created. Right away when it's created, that alarm turns on, right, and gets out of point triggering. Okay, so you've learned how to do it with a step in your own counter, and you've learned now how to do it with alarms. Alarms, probably you find them a little bit easier. Um, people might criticize alarms because the alarms aren't part of other programming languages. That's something special to GameMaker because they know that kind of task of counting down or counting up is so popular in games they added this little feature for you so no problem using it as long as you know behind the scenes that it's really just doing this idea setting a variable and constantly ticking away at that variable until it hits zero and that's your alarm made it a little bit easier thanks for watching uh there'll probably be a challenge or two you know practice this and uh, go have fun, and we'll see you in the next lesson where we learn some more good stuff. Thanks for watching.